Another reactor at a nuclear power plant in southwestern Japan is back online. It's the second restart under new regulations adopted after the 2011 Fukushima accident. The operators are preparing to restart three more reactors, but many nearby residents say they need more information. NHK World's Tomoko Kamata explains. <laughs> The number two reactor at the Sendai nuclear power plant went back online on Thursday. The number one reactor at the plant was restarted in August. Until then, all of Japan's nuclear reactors had been offline since September 2013. Two reactors at the Takahama plant and one at the Ikata plant have been found to be in compliance with the new regulations. The operators of Takahama plant want to go back online by January, but the court decision is blocking away. The Ikata plant is undergoing checks by regulators. Another 20 reactors have applied for regulatory approval. Government officials say restarting Japan's nuclear plants will ensure a stable power supply and lower greenhouse gas emissions. And plant operators say the cost of fuel at thermal plants is extremely burdensome. Isamu Matsumiya lives in the town of Takahama. He believes restarting the reactors is necessary, but he's unhappy with how the local government is handling the issue. He said town officials broadcast information about safety measures on television six times a day, but there were no face-to-face -face meetings with residents. Matsumiya responded to a questionnaire and asked how radioactive water will be kept from seeping out. He received a reply saying, the government is working on it. The officials don't understand how we feel when we ask such questions. I'm disappointed that this is how they respond to residents. Some other residents pointed out problems with the town's evacuation plans. Most are expected to use a coastal road. But town officials predict the route would be inundated if a tsunami hit the area. Experts also suggest that many evacuees would end up getting stuck in traffic. The cabinet office is currently doing its best to support and coordinate with local officials to respond appropriately should an emergency occur. An NHK survey conducted last weekend asked people how they feel about restarting the reactors. 18% of respondents said they support bringing the plants back online, while 43% are opposed. Experts say the government must demonstrate how it plans to protect public safety if it wants to gain public support. Tokpega看了しました。0.53マイクロシーベルトパワーです。0.43マイクロシーベルトパワーです。
川の近くの土手の上の放射線量は 0.25 マイクロシーベルトパーアワーです0ポイント25マイクロシーベルトパーアワーリバーサイドリバーベルト Olympic Committee official has suggested that the additional five sports Tokyo has proposed for the 2020 Games will be sent to the General Assembly as a complete package. The sports are baseball and softball, karate, skateboarding, sport climbing, and surfing. Officials in Tokyo want to add 18 events in those sports. We are very pleased with the package of events. That have been proposed、uh, for your games. Coach said he believes the proposal is well balanced with indoor and outdoor sports. He also said the proposal includes traditional events and those popular with young people. The IOC will make the final decision at a General Assembly in August. Continues to spend more and more on healthcare. Medical expenses for fiscal 2013 top 40 trillion yen for the first time. The country's aging population and advanced treatments are the factors pushing costs higher. Officials at the health ministry say the nation's medical bill in the year that ended March 2014 totaled around $330 billion. That's up 2.2% in yen terms from a year earlier. And it translates into an average of about $2,600 per person, up 2.3% from before. The expenses marked a record high for the seventh straight year. A record number of Japanese households are receiving welfare benefits, mainly due to an increase in elderly recipients. Nearly half those households included people aged 65 or older. 
Japan's labor ministry says almost 1.63 million households received welfare benefits in July. That's nearly 3,000 more than in the previous month. Households of those aged 65 or over on welfare increased by more than 2,000 to about 798,000. Ministry officials expect the number of single elderly people on welfare to continue to rise. The construction industry continues to grapple with labor shortages. However, officials at major construction equipment maker Komatsu say a solution lies in automated machinery. Komatsu has rolled out a self-regulated uh, digger and bulldozer equipped with information and communications technology. They can automatically dig mounds and smooth out slopes. The machines go online to download geological survey data and necessary instructions when switched to an automatic control mode. Two built-in cameras capture 3D images of the terrain. This allows operators at distant locations to monitor work progress. Skilled workers should be deployed in areas where machines can't be used, but the remaining jobs should be automated. I think that's the goal. The head of the company hopes the automated machines will help ease the shortage of trained workers. People are flocking to a trade show near Tokyo for a look at the latest in IT and robot technology. They're getting a glimpse of new gadgets that could soon play a role in everyday life. NHK World's Emiko Lenart reports. Here at Japan's biggest high-tech exhibition, called SeaTech, visitors are getting an eyeful of cutting-edge devices that may shake up their daily routines. Take this interactive mirror that suggests makeup you might like. Or this high-tech kitchen and dining room. It will help you cook and entertain guests. The main focus of the show is the Internet of Things. This refers to clouds and other data management services used on a variety of devices. Robohan is a walking mobile phone. When it receives calls and emails, it walks over to let you know. The small robot also has excellent communication skills. It reacts to verbal commands. It can even carry on a conversation with the user. All of its voice recognition is processed using cloud technology. The robot also has a small projector to show photos and videos that it took. Tomotaka Takahashi created the Robohan. He says one of his goals was to build a new relationship between humans and robots. Human shape is for uh, uh, that people can feel uh, um, sympathy uh, and the affection uh, to robots. Robohon will be more uh, closer to us compared to conventional smartphones. Another eye catcher is this crane. It looks like a traditional Japanese paper crane but it can actually fly, making use of sophisticated technology on board. The creators have put inside some of the smallest high-tech equipment in the world, including a tiny motor and sensors for positioning control. The sensors can detect speed, wind, and more. This robot has an array of technology that enables it to play with a human. The table tennis robots can map 3D images of the moving ball and send the data to a computer. The software predicts the movements of the ball and tells the robot how to make a precise return. But the technology is meant for more than just playing ping pong with people. Experts are trying to apply its sensing and control abilities to help regulate traffic. They are also working on a new application for cars which will help control their speed and movement. With our technology, cars will have an ability to grasp the situations they are in and predict the dangers for drivers. These technologies could create new possibilities for society and help to transform our lives.
Emiko Lennart, NHK World, Chiba.